Before the Me Too movement picked up steam, these Chicagoans created a safe place for survivors to tell their stories through art. Take a look. When I first walked into Awakenings, I was shocked and I was very moved, as I think everyone is, but I was overcome with this sensation of desperate need for people to see this. My name is Jean Cozier. I am the founder of Awakenings. Awakenings is an Illinois nonprofit. We make visible the creative expression of survivors of sexual violence. We are a very small organization and we exist in Chicago, which is wonderful for the Chicago community, but there are survivors all over the country and world, which is why we have our rotating art exhibits, our concerts, we publish a literary magazine to really get the art out there and educate the public. Oh, I, I wanted a dedicated space, so people coming in here would be coming in here with the deliberate intent to see artwork created by sexual abuse survivors. To honor my cousin, Judith Dawn, because her art was extremely healing to her. As she recovered from her trauma, um, she picked up her art again. The art that's in this exhibit, of course, is experiences of abuse. I was a child sexual abuse survivor, and because when I was doing art originally in this vein, I didn't let anybody see it. But coming into the gallery was like, oh yeah, this is where it goes. For a long time before I started painting, I couldn't do art. I was still that damaged. And at the point at which I could start to do my art again, it was just, it gives you a whole new life. I mean, you just catch on fire. We hear that all the time from artists, you know, I had to get it out of me. It takes the experience outside of the body, outside of the head, and puts it on a medium that people can actually see and touch. It's really important to us that people feel welcome to participate in our arts programming or feel welcome to submit their artwork or writing to us, no matter what experience they have. I think that's one really wonderful thing about the art that's hanging in the gallery and the, the writing that's published in our magazine and the music that we you know have in our concerts is that skill level and craftsmanship actually don't matter to us at all. It's more about the impact those things had on the survivor. So I think we have pieces hanging in this gallery by people who have never taken an art class, who have never had an exhibit before, um, because it's about the act of making art to heal from something. It's not about, you know, how famous of an artist you are, or how many Instagram followers you have. I could not ask for anything more, really, than practically everybody who walks in here doesn't leave the same person. Please welcome a Chicagoan you need to know, Laura Kinter. Hi, Laura. Hi, Obviously some amazing things happening at Awakenings. What's next for you guys? Um, what's next? Well, we've been growing exponentially for the past couple years. Um, wow. We actually have our very first bilingual art exhibit opening next March, or next March, next Friday, March 15th, called Healing Generations. Wow. And what other programs do you offer at Awakenings? Uh, a ton. So as we kind of said in the segment, we offer as many kinds of art as possible. We like to cover visual art. So we have the gallery, which mm -hmm. exhibits all of these paintings. We also have workshops where people can come in and actually make art for the first time. We try to cover the musical arts by offering concerts and musical workshops. And then we also do a lot of literary work. That's actually our biggest program is our literary magazine. So people can submit writing about what happened to them and we can publish it in a literary magazine or in a blog. Yeah, incredibly therapeutic yes. and, and certainly well needed. Yeah. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you, Laura. All right, for more information and upcoming.